Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another Q&A video here. So thank you guys for posting all of your questions. Whenever I do do these Q&A videos, I do get your questions from Discord. So if you do want to take part in these Q&As and whatnot, and for whenever I ask for questions, definitely go join the Discord. The server name is Appetite for the Dead. The link is in the description of this video. But um, yeah, again, thank you so much for all of your questions. A lot of these questions are regarding The Walking Dead uh, Season 11C, obviously. I mean, we're five days away now until the show returns, which is just absolutely exciting. I also wanted to mention that this Sunday, or I guess this Saturday night, but it will technically be this Sunday morning, I am going to be live on Twitch, actually sort of streaming and reacting to the episode. So I'll be watching it, doing a live Q&A with you guys and whatnot, which will be a lot of fun. I was doing this a lot before, but I'm going to do it every single Sunday now. You know, I took a break from it, you know, with Tales and even Fear the Walking Dead, just because it wasn't that exciting. I didn't want to stay up that late for that. But with The Walking Dead, I'm actually really excited to do that. So yeah, this Saturday night or early Sunday, I also will be doing that. So definitely go follow me on Twitch. The, the channel name is Appetite for the Dead. The link is in the description. And I, I hope to see you guys there this Saturday as we await the, the premiere here. I mean, I guess we're going to be watching two episodes, right? Which is kind of nuts. So yeah, there's, there's a lot to talk about here. So anyways, make sure to be a subscriber if you do want to get all my Walking Dead content like this. I mean, there's a lot of stuff happening. October 2nd is only five days away now. First question here, do you think the shocking death could be Herschel instead of Mercer? I'm going to say no. I don't think they could kill Herschel off. I know killing Herschel off would be shocking. And the description is, you know, the big shocking moment is, or it seems to be a death that is going to throw comic book viewers off. But I don't see it being Herschel. I talked about it before, but I do think it's going to be either Lance or most likely Sebastian or I guess potentially even Mercer. Again. Like there's a chance it could be Mercer because Mercer is one of those characters because, again, it's supposed to throw comic book viewers off, right? Or comic book readers off. And, and so if you killed Lance off, would that throw off comic book readers? Not really, because Lance as a character wasn't really that big of a character in the comics. And so if they killed him off, I would just completely, like honestly, I'd really disagree with that, like, or that statement anyways, that it threw comic book readers off, because that's not true at all. Like if, if, if they kill Lance off, it would be shocking for the season, yeah. But, you know, would it be shocking for comic book readers? Not really, because Lance doesn't play any sort of big role at all in the comics. So if you kill off Sebastian, then yeah, that's a little different. Killing off Sebastian definitely would throw a lot of people off. That would actually be shocking. And uh, yeah, I don't even know where the hell you would go there, but that would that, that's definitely that. But in terms of your question, could it be Herschel? I don't see them killing off Herschel. That's crazy. I mean, you kind of want Glenn's legacy to, to live on, right? So I just don't see them killing Herschel off. What do you think will happen to Negan's wife during 11C? Since you can't see her much in many, many scenes, do you think something will happen to her leading Negan to go to New York with Maggie? I, I do see the character dying. There's no way in hell that character is going to survive. I mean... I could totally see Angela Kang just being like, you know what? People are expecting that, so we're just going to keep the character alive. To me, no matter what, it's sort of a lose-lose situation because Annie is, you know, like her introduction was so random out of nowhere because it happened during that time jump. Literally, we met Negan like right away. And first of all, how many time jumps have happened over the last year or two? Like there's been so many. And so literally we meet Negan. He has a wife named Annie. And she's pregnant. And it's like, okay, this character is already has to be super important, right? But we didn't see how they met. We never saw how they sort of fell in love. We never saw any of that. So there's that annoying part there that it's like, if they're going to the spinoff, are they going to show how they met in the spinoff? No, I doubt they're getting to that here in season 11C. So if she's a really important character and she doesn't die, then I'm going to be frustrated that we never knew what happened here, right? But if you actually go with, you know, what everyone thinks, and that is that she was introduced to die, then that also makes, again, people are still going to be super upset about it because it's like, wow, you introduce this character, do all that stuff just to kill her off. Like, it was so predictable, right? So again, that's why I say it's a lose-lose situation. I, th I think it was just so unneeded. I don't know why you had to do it. It's not like it's a, you know, Annie's awesome. I like her as a character, but you could have just introduced the character, right? Just to have on the show. I, I think it's kind of pointless, and I really feel like they could have done something else. Like, that's one of my criticisms I would say that I have with Angela King's storytelling, is that there there are certain moments that need to happen. So say the Whisper of Pike moment, right? Or, or there's a few others as well, where it's like, there has to be certain deaths or bigger moments, and so you know that you want certain characters to react in a certain way, and so how do you do that? Well, you create storylines that come out of nowhere, right? And so you had the Highwaymen just to have more heads on the pikes. And literally just none of it made sense. And with Annie, it's like, 
I, I kind of feel like they want Negan by the end of this season to be like the old Negan, right? Like his savior self in the season six finale, basically to sort of set up the spinoffs and what's happening between him and Maggie. And so it's like, okay, so they want to do that. Well, how can we do that? So they introduce something new so that they can say that that was there. They'll do it a, you know, a half a season beforehand or something so that maybe characters or fans could sort of, you know, learn to love these characters or whatever. And I just, I just don't like it because it's so predictable and you can see it. A big moment, honestly, would be to kill Herschel Ree. If you want Negan to react like that, you kill off Herschel Ree, right? Then you get a genuine response there. That's something that no one's going to see coming. And yeah, that's how you handle that. But obviously, you don't want to do that. And so that's what I mean. Like, there's better ways to handle this story-wise. But it just seems like what they kind of do now is, like, introduce a new storyline. And it's kind of predictable at that point. So we'll have to wait and see. Obviously, I could be wrong. But in terms of your question, do I see Annie surviving? I, I really don't. I, I think we know why she was introduced. Q&A, how do you think they will handle the six-year gap of Rick's history? Could it be a season one explaining uh, year one? or two and etc. Also, how will Michonne find him if he's not in the US? Um, okay, well, on that second or the first part there, I do think they're just going to probably skip over that six year time jump really fast. I think we're probably going to see it in the first episode. And I think that's okay. To be honest, I actually think that's okay. I don't have to see everything that Rick's done over the last six years. I hated that with Gimple's storytelling before with season seven and eight. It was always like that. It was like, if they're traveling from Alexandria to the hilltop, we have to see the journey. You know, I do think Angela Kang probably jumps around a little bit too much, right? Because I know in season nine, when she took over, it was refreshing how, you know, you would see a character leave Alexandria. Maybe in the episode, they weren't going to show up in the hilltop. But the episode afterwards, they would, right? But you would focus on other stuff. Or maybe even sometimes, literally, like a, a couple minutes later, the character would be there. You know, I, I think that was really refreshing. I think it happens a little bit too much now. But my point is, I, I think over those six years, like, I don't understand what you're going to be telling in terms of a story there, right? I think it makes so much more sense to sort of, in that first episode, see Rick's reaction to arriving there, see some stuff that he's dealing with. And honestly, I feel like right after that, it should basically be that he's put to work or maybe he's in a prison cell at the health and welfare complex for six years, right? And so this way, when we pick up with the story in episode two and six years later, we see a much different Rick Grimes that has literally been through hell over six years. There's this mystery there with the character and we're trying to relearn the character again, right? I think that could be so much fun. And in terms of how will Michonne find him if he's not in the U.S.? I think that's simple. I think he's still in the U.S. I don't think he went to Europe. I think Daryl being sent to Europe is so unrelated to or to where Rick is, like his whereabouts. I do think Rick's in the U.S. I think Daryl's going to get close to finding him. And then, then I kind of feel like Jadis is going to be involved with getting Daryl sent to, to Europe. Do you think the last episode is going to be two hours long? Uh, no, I don't see it being two hours long. I actually seeing it being like an hour and a half. I have heard some things, and so I think it's going to be about an hour and a half, but... I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. It could still be two hours. Um, yeah, I, my guess right now is probably about like 90 minutes, like an hour and a half. Do you think Rick will try to kill Negan and vice versa? Well, with vice versa, no, I don't see Negan trying to kill Rick because that's sort of out of character at this point. In terms of Rick trying to kill Negan, I could see that maybe, you know, like I, I can see that being a, a like a, this instant reaction that he has right to seeing him there. But I just don't think it's ever going to come to that because I think Michonne's going to tell him everything, right? Like, I feel like in that first season, in that finale, when they first reunite, at least that's how I'm predicting it's going to go, I think she's going to tell him everything, you know, about the fact that he has a son. Like, that's already really big, right? I think there's a lot of other things like that that basically he's going to learn. And the stuff with Negan, you know, maybe we see a scene of it. Maybe there's a scene where they're just talking about stuff. I think that's probably how it's going to go. Like, I, I think he's going to know more about the situation before Negan shows up. But they could always do it like that, right? Like, there could be a scene in the future where maybe, you know, Rick and them are doing whatever. That He reunites with Daryl, and then he sees Negan off to the side, and he's like, whoa, whoa, what the hell? Right? And he kind of reacts a certain way, and everyone's like, tries to calm him down. He's like, no, 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 he's good, he's good. And he's like, what? And then so they explain kind of thing, right? But that that's also kind of the, the more predictable route. So, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Will we get more of the Althea tapes episodes from Fear the Walking Dead? Um, I'm going to say as of now, probably not, because I don't even know where the hell Fear the Walking Dead is going. 
Um, I think right now they're really focused on Madison and stuff. So I'm going to say as of now, I, I don't think so. Any chance we see Jadis at all in the last episodes? Now, this is one thing I think they could actually give us Jadis because there's a big mystery there, right? If you think of those two characters, Negan and Gabriel, they both saw helicopters and it's basically been quiet since then. Like, no one's talked about it, but they both saw helicopters and it's like, what the hell? Why don't you tell anyone about that? Because in your world, there's no helicopters. Even like you're even at the Commonwealth and there's no helicopters. So like, what the hell's happening here? And so I could totally see Jadis being that connection to finding out, you know, what happened with Rick. Because there's got to be something here, right? Like something has to come up here that introduces the whole Rick story and what happened and this and that. And I could see Jadis maybe making a trip to the Commonwealth. And then when she's there, all of a sudden she sees like Carol or Gabriel sees her or something like that. And it just like completely throws her off. And then they find her. And then, you know, that's how it's revealed about what happened to Rick. Because I feel like the stuff with Rick is going to be a little unexpected, right? Maybe something happens where Jadis and a bunch of other soldiers are going to go pick up some people like Tyler Davis and stuff. Connie and them are watching them, and then Jadis is captured or something, and then there's a big reveal, right? Because Angela King did say the story was going to get really big. So, yeah, Jadis appearing in these last eight, I could totally see. I don't know how they would have kept that a secret, though, but I could definitely see that. Jadis in the Rick and Michonne spinoff, or the Daryl spinoff. Well, if I had to pick one, it's going to be the Rick and Michonne spinoff, but I could definitely see both of them. Do you think they will ever revisit the old locations, such as the prison, Woodbury, Herschel's Farm, and etc.? I hope so. I've always wanted them to revisit Herschel's Farm, because Herschel's Farm was honestly one of the one of my favorite places, and I thought it would be so cool for Herschel Reed to go back there, and just to see how things have changed over the last 10 years, right? Like, they've, I think that was, they were there last, like, 10 years ago, so... That would be really cool. Um, I don't know if they ever will, though. But if I had to choose a place, definitely Herschel's Farm. What version of Rick do you think we'll see, and what version do you want? Well, that's basically, that's a good question, because it's basically the same answer. Like, the version that we're getting is going to be Red Machete Rick. Gimple confirmed that. And the version I want is Red Machete Rick. So, yeah, we're going to be getting that. Do you think we'll find out how and why Daryl is brought to Europe, or do you think we'll get the answer to that in the spinoff? I, I, we're gonna get the answer to that in the spinoff. They're not gonna like say any of that on the show because their whole thing is, I think they they want to end the Walking Dead story on the show. Any spinoff stuff they're gonna talk about in the spinoffs, there is gonna be some setup, obviously. But I feel like the the setup is it, like in the show here is really gonna sort of correlate with the ending of the Walking Dead, which is again Daryl finding out that Rick's alive because there's so much you're able to do there because finding out that he's alive, knowing that he's out there. And then having to go out there to go and get him. Like, that is such a peaceful way to end the show because he's back. He's there. And now Daryl's like, I have to go get him, right? So you do get this ending, but there's also this spinoff because it's obvious, like, spinoff, right? There's, there's a bigger world out there. Daryl needs to go and find Rick. So there's this big mission. Um, You know, in terms of that being, in terms of talking about the story like that, though, like, oh, the show's ending. But now there's going to be this big discussion of, like, well, now Daryl has to go find Rick. Yeah, that that's definitely going to be an issue, like, for some people, I think. Not for me, I'm totally cool with it. But for some people, you know, I think they're going to be like, well, I wanted to see that storyline on the show. Like, why introduce that here? You know, like, this is The Walking Dead. Why, like, you got to tell that story here. Why are you introducing new, new storylines for other shows? But that that's just the thing with TV nowadays. Like, there's so many spinoffs. Marvel, I mean, the list goes on and on. There's so many franchises out there that do this so like to me this isn't really anything too crazy like to me this just it makes a lot of sense and so yeah last question is would you ever like to be in an episode of the walking dead and obviously i would i mean i don't know who the hell would say no to that so uh but thank you so much for posting all of your questions i really did enjoy answering all of that definitely if you do want to take part in these q a's definitely go follow my discord the server link is in the description but i hope you guys all enjoyed the video and i'll see you guys in the next one